Welcome to another episode of Being Woodworking, the road from novice to pro. We're getting there, slowly but surely. This episode, I'll show you I made my miter saw station. I didn't just build it and then make a video. I've been using this thing for a couple of weeks after making the course of the video, and I love it. I'm not quite done with it yet. There's still a few things I'm undecided on, whether I want to go this way or that way, but I'll explain that to you. But here it is. A miter saw station with dust collection. Here we go. Stick around. Well, time to flex the dead bod and non-existent muscles. If you've seen any of my other videos, I've got this long countertop in my shop that the previous owner built, and it's a great countertop, but it doesn't have a miter saw station set up. So I've taken this section that doesn't have any cabinets underneath it. Hold on, here's the good part. Ready? Good grief. Is it stuck on something? What's going on? Oh, no, I'm just trying to bring it out <laughs> at an angle instead of straight. If only I had a friend or a helper or a family member helping me. Uh, it's a joke from my garage roll-up door video. Anyhow, now I've measured the distance that I need for it to sit flush with the top. And I'm marking that distance on the cabinet carcass here so that we can get a, a good level miter saw station. Now I'm going to reuse the section that I cut out. So now I just need to square it up with some lumber and oh yeah, that screw's not going to go all the way through. Um, so on the front, there's two strips of 2 by 4 and on the back, there's only one. So my normal deck screws will work in the back, but in the front, I'm going to have to use some pocket holes. So putting in these pocket holes, getting those going. Now I'm measuring how much of a drop we're going to need from that top measurement I've already taken due to the depth of the countertop. So I've got that in here. I'm going to cleat in a couple 2x4s as a... Uh, kind of a framework, just a, a little stop block type thing to help me get this thing set up. And then once I get it set up, I'm going to go in and put some screws in, cleat straight to the wall. So get this thing in here, slide it in. Now I'm double checking the measurement from my miter saw tabletop to the countertop. Make sure that's right. A little test fit. Make sure that I can slide back and forth just fine and I can. At this point, I decided to put more work on myself and paint the countertops and stain the cabinet doors and drawer fronts. So I'm using an espresso stain. I put a gray enamel paint on the countertops. I ended up not liking it because the paint was too soft. So now you can see I've added some black melamine to the top. And now I'm just tracing what I'm going to need on the bottom side for my dust collection. At first, I just drilled a bunch of holes thinking I would be happy with that. And you can see that here. And as I got to looking at it and thinking about it, I'm like, eh, I'm not going to like just the holes. So I'm actually making a cutout with my jigsaw. And now this part really made this job a lot easier. I have some template material that I use for my epoxy jobs. So I'm going to use this template material and I'm going to use it to mark out what I'm going to need in real space for the cutouts for my miter saw to work properly. It's going to have to raise, it's going to have to lower, it's going to have to change on the angles and the bevels so I can do angled cuts and compound miter cuts if I need to. So I'm using this and there's a couple different ways you can use this and you can use straight staples, you can use hot glue, you can use uh, several things to make this stuff work. I just decided to go with Starbond Super Glue and Accelerator to make this project easy and fast. So I'm just putting longer than I need pieces of this material up here for making templates and then cutting it off where I need it. So at the bottom, I want enough room to put my hand behind there and adjust the fence if I need to or adjust anything in the back. And then in the top and on the direct sides, I need to make sure there's enough room to come through with the saw on any of the angles. So I'm just double checking that, eyeballing it, and once I get where I like it, I make a mark, make a cut, and glue it up. So from this side, you get a slightly better angle of what I'm 
trying to talk about and try to explain. So this template material, it's like a hard, thin PVC plastic. And I can cut it with my shop shears. Probably cut it with regular scissors, might struggle with it a little bit. But put that star bond on there, squirt some accelerator on the offset piece, and you have to hold it maybe 10 seconds and then you've got it. So really made this part of the job easy. I didn't have to get a piece of cardboard or a piece of plywood and keep going back and forth to my jigsaw and make different cuts. So I really liked that part of it. And here you can see the finished product. Once I had that template, I took that template over to a piece of melamine, uh, put it on the back side, and now I've got it. Just screw it in and I'm done with this part. Now I'm just double checking the path of travel when I move my miter saw around with different angles and different bevels. Everything seems to be where I want it, so I'm happy with it. Now I'm going to attach the bottom side of the dust collection. This is the fitting that I have. I bought this as part of a set from Rockler, I think. Once I had that installed underneath, I decided it's time to paint the box that I just created to match the rest of the miter station. So I've got this gray enamel. I'm just going to go ahead and put this on the sides and the front and the top. Um, of course, I didn't want to get that all over my saw, so I just put a trash bag over that to protect it. A little bit of paint, a little bit of tape, and then we're done with this part. So now i am hooked up my dust collector to the bottom fitting that I showed you. I'm making several cuts, and I don't like the amount of dust that I still got coming out on my cabinet. So I ordered a 3 inch door sweep that has the horsehair looking stuff. But after I cut it that sweep material becomes loose and likes to go everywhere so I'm just gooping some hot glue on the ends after I cut it to keep it in place. And then similar to the process of creating the template it's just as simple as measuring a mark, making a cut, and gluing it on. Now, I haven't seen anybody else do this and use this material before, so I wasn't quite sure how I was going to like it. So I'm only using hot glue at this point to attach it to the dust collection box. Uh, if I like it, I'll either use screws or maybe some super glue in the future to make sure that it doesn't fall off in simple use. And so far, so good. So in that previous clip, I showed you... Some of the dust that got on here, it's only fair that now, after adding the sweep guard, that we try it again. As I'm making these test cuts, I'm watching to see where the dust is going, and I'm finding that once the dust is in the box, it tends to stay there and go into the dust collection. But anything that's out on the countertops tends to come from the front of the cuts, so I'm going to have to think about that one a little bit. So I made eight cuts, and... I've still got a little bit of dust flying out coming over here. It's not as bad as before, but I can still see that. I'm going to try something else. So before I didn't have anything attached to the dust collection on this thing because my experience showed that it didn't work worth the flip anyways. So I just had to blow it in the back and going down that large four inch hole. So I'm going to attach a hose to the dust collection and then just feed it down into that hole and see if that makes any difference. So now I've made several more cuts, dramatically less dust now that I have a hose feeding from the dust collection of the saw down into the large four inch port. So that made a pretty good difference. I'll show you something else. So in the process of doing this whole thing, made it look a a lot better made it function a lot better but I had to add a little bit of touch to it if you know what I mean so see if we can zoom in on this I've had these I don't know 20 years or so <laughs> that's the butt head it's the beavis <laughs> This is a tricone drill bit from my, it's a relic from my roughnecking days. Got a K bar up there, represent my former military. I got some, got some valve wrenches up here from when I was in the refinery. So a little bit of everything in me right here. Now this fence, 
I couldn't decide whether I wanted a an actual fence or if I wanted to put T-Track down in my countertops and have a smooth surface with stoplight. And I went somewhere in the middle. I'm calling it a minimalist fence. So it's literally just T-Track on top of here. I got adhesive ruler tape and put back here so it's measured exactly and starts accurately from the blade. The distance from the blade to here, if I got shortcuts, I'll use a pre-measured stop block. But when it goes 13 inches or more, I've got this stop block. I took a piece of white oak, sanded it down, drilled two holes in it, added these T-tracks, bolts, and star handles. And then I added a little something, please forgive me, but I had to put in a little subliminal message for those of you that aren't already subscribed. So what started out as a pretty straightforward, simple project, making a miter station, turned into, well, a lot more. But really, I enjoyed it. I'm proud of it. I think the gray, the black melamine, and the espresso stain all mix pretty well. The functionality of my shop, the workflow of my shop, and the aesthetics of my shop improved dramatically. I'm proud of it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it, and don't forget that subliminal message over there. Please like, subscribe, if you hit the alert, that's the bell down there, you'll get a notification when I put out more videos. Till next time.